right guys, so we have our interface designed, looking pretty good, so check this out. Now of course, whenever the user looks at this screen and they're ready to log into our app, what they're gonna do is they're gonna click this little email input and that software keyboard is gonna pop up. Now, sometimes in your simulator it pops up, sometimes it doesn't. The reason that it doesn't always pop up is because this simulator is actually hooked up to the keyboard on your desktop or just on your main Mac. So it says, okay, you probably don't want that little software keyboard to pop up. But for this example, we actually do. So if it's not popping up, make sure you have your simulator selected and go to hardware, keyboard, toggle software keyboard. So again, this obviously happens all the time on actual devices. So you don't really have to worry about doing anything in your code to it. But just for a little simulator issue, that's what happens. So they're gonna start typing in their email, whatever it is, at whatever.com, and they're gonna say, okay, my password. And by the way, I'm gonna show you guys how to, you would never wanna use default plain text for a password. You're always gonna wanna use a secure password so it has those little circles or asterisks. But for right now, you know, this is just a demo. So they type in their password and then they hit login. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, this keyboard isn't going away, so login. Oh, maybe I just have to tap the background. Nope, that's not, how the heck do you make this keyboard go away? So that is one problem that we have and that's why we need to use something called a first responder. Now, a first responder is essentially a way of Apple saying, okay, whatever element, whatever item the user is currently interacting with, this item must be important. Now, your iPhone already has default behavior built in to handle some of these items. So let me go ahead and run this simulator again. So of course, one of the default behaviors whenever a user clicks in one of these text fields is to pull up this keyboard. And it makes sense, it's actually really smart and handy because you don't want the user to click this and then you know the keyboard doesn't pop up. So it's really smart that they said, okay, this element right here this input field is now the first responder, but the bad thing about this is because is pretty much whenever we click away, it doesn't know when to give up that first responder status. It doesn't know when to say, okay, this element is no longer important, so you can hide that keyboard now. We have to do that manually. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that in this tutorial. So let me just go ahead and hide this panel right there, and I'm gonna put my split screen view on so we can see the brains and if you click the Venn diagram, then it'll show the assistant editor. And let's go ahead and get rid of all of this. So get rid of this, get rid of these default override methods. We don't really need them. So what I wanna do is I wanna first just get a reference or an outlet to both of these elements right here. So of course, anytime you wanna do that, select this text field, hold down control and drag. And I will name this one, I'll just name it email. And of course, it's an outlet, hit connect. So we now have a reference to this. Now just do it with here, hold down control, drag. And right underneath this one, I'm gonna name this outlet, I don't know, might as well stick with password. And hit connect. So now we have a reference to both of these things. And eventually what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna say, okay, they're not important anymore. So first, when do we wanna say that? Well, whenever the user clicks the login button, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna call a method saying, okay, they obviously click this login button, so they're obviously not interacting with these, so you can drop that first responder BS. All right, so anytime we wanna call a method whenever they perform an action, what we need to do is we need to control, drag, and remember that is called an action whenever the user does something. And what do we want the method to be called? We'll just name it like button pressed. Now, of course, this is a button and everything else is good. So this is the method that's gonna be called whenever they click the login button. So that is one instance where we want to hide that keyboard. So again, what do we do to hide the keyboard? Well, all we have to do is we need to say, okay, this is not the first responder and this is not the first responder. Pretty much give up 
that priority. So we need to access both of these fields and drop the first responder status. So self dot email dot resign first responder. So what this is going to do is it's going to go to this object, which is that email field and resign first responder pretty much say, Hey, operating system, I'm not important anymore. Don't worry about that keyboard. And we can do the same thing for the password field resign first responder. So again, whenever we click that button now, give me a little warning. It scared me for a second. So let's go ahead and build this and see if it works. All right, so they want to log into their email and they also want to log in. There's their password, pretty cool. They click log in and check it out. It says, okay, neither of those are important anymore, so you can hide the keyboard. Pretty sweet. And of course, if you click back on them, then boom, you're, you're good to go again. It pops up the keyboard automatically. But you know, the user is like, you know what? I, uh, I don't remember my email address. So what I'm going to do is I don't want to click log in. How do they typically hide the keyboard? Well, they just click somewhere in the background. All right. Well, I don't want to click log in, but whenever I'm clicking in the background, this keyboard's not hiding. So how do I take care of that? Well, in order to add that functionality, what we can do is this. All right. So there's a built in method called touches began. And what happens is it gets called any time the user touches their finger down on the main view, just on the screen. So by default, it's not in our class because it's a method that we have access to, but it isn't overridden because you hardly ever use it. However, in this instance, it works great. So if you go and call touches began and then just hit enter or return, what it does is it says, okay, this is the method that you're overriding. And I'll just write built in method. And what do you want to happen whenever the user touches the screen? Well, all we want to do is we first want to access the main view. So self dot view in that view refers to the main overall view, the main container. In other words, your entire screen. Now, if you just write end editing, this takes a parameter and just write, I'm just type turd right there. Now all this is saying is we want to end the editing of all items. So all items that are in here, including both of these, stop editing them. Now, of course, whenever we stop editing them, it means that of course we're not using them and they give up first responder status. So again, if we run this in now, if we tap the background, okay, now that's not working again because hardware, toggle software, keyboard, that's kind of annoying. I really hope they do something with that. Type your email, type your password, now you can click login and it'll hide. And of course, if you just tap the background anywhere like here, it'll hide it as well. So now our app is performing like the user expects and it saves them some headache and well, there you go. That is what the first responder is. And those are two methods to give up first responder status to hide your keyboard. So uh, thank you guys for watching. And I don't even know what we're going to be talking about in the next tutorial, but is going to be sweet. So I'll see you then.